With SN15 landing, SpaceX made a bold statement amidst the bid protest for NASA's Achilles contract. It was a great week for SpaceX, with its Crew-1 splashdown, Starship and Starlink launches. The SN15 flight appeared much more stable compared to that of its predecessors. There wasn't any excessive fire in the engine during the ignition of landing burn. Hardware also looked more rigid. In short, it was sort of a perfect landing. While watching from a distance, it looked more like a Sun-10, but on close observation, the differences were clearly visible. As it took almost 8 minutes for SN-10 to explode after flight, extra precautions were taken for SN-15. There was a methane fire upon landing, but it won't be wrong to say that a little sprinkler saved the day. Some might say similar fire was seen during the SN-10. And then we all saw that explosion. Well, yes, post-landing fires are normal with Starship, but with SN-10, hard impact damaged the structural rigidity of the body, causing the internal methane leakage, which also caught fire due to hot engines. But with SN-15, as the landing seemed stable, there were no signs of hard impact. We will get the detailed analysis soon, but as of now, SN-15's landing is what matters the most. It will be pretty early to talk about this, but as Starship landed itself safely, the usual question would be, what's next for Starship? FAA had already approved SN-16 and SN-17 launches, but as they were pretty much similar to SN-15, it is highly likely that SpaceX will skip them. Although SN-16 was already being stacked at the Boca Chica Starbase, it only seems sensible to test Super Heavy BN2 Booster instead. In fact, Elon already said in its tweet before that they were trying to push for BN2 launch by April end, which obviously didn't happen, but now the window looks much clear. As clarified by him, BN2 will be orbit capable, and hence it will be covered in heat shield layer. They already had multiple tiles installed on SN15, but it wasn't tested with the orbital entry. Again, the recovery mechanism with Starship Super Heavy will be much different, as they are attempting to catch it during the landing. Before Super Heavy could be rolled out, we should be able to see some changes on the Starbase for constructing the catching infrastructure. If it worked well, then we will have SN20 lined, which will be in a complete Starship BFR shape. Even though NASA has freezed the funding temporarily, SpaceX has won the HLS contract. If they could make the Starship ready for the orbital launch by end of this year, SpaceX will be the only company with working lander vehicle ready to be tested. All these indications points towards Super Heavy as the next launch attempt. But as said earlier, it is too early to talk about this. Even though the launch and landing look almost perfect for SN15, data, data is yet to be analyzed. And if they found something to be improved, we might even have SN16 ready to launch just in a few days. That being said, we are all rooting for Super Heavy alone. Let's hope the data yields positive result. So what are your thoughts? Would you like to see SN16? Or would you like to jump directly to Super Heavy booster number 2 and SN20? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Meanwhile, if you are interested in knowing how exactly Starship Lander is going to land astronauts on Moon, do check out our video on the scene where the links are in the description. I hope you found the video interesting. If so, do check out our other videos as well. And if you enjoyed them, do give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. See you in the next one.